Okay, thanks. We have Nicola Kraus. He's going to tell us about the challenge of free groups. Yeah, uh, thanks, Steve. And yeah, I just wanted to say that this uh, workshop is fantastic. And many thanks to Millie and uh, Thierry and Steve for organizing it. I have learned many things and I had a lot of fun. And um, yeah, right. So my title is The Challenge of Free Groups. But then I also have a subtitle because I'm not sure whether my title describes my talk very well. So my subtitle is Are Certain Types Inhabitable in Some But Not All Versions of Homotopy Type Theory? And I'm glad I managed to fit this into one line. But okay. I'm not sure maybe I should uh, write larger. And so, talk for large large. Yeah. so uh, what I mean is this. So uh, <laughs> We have uh, many different versions of homotopy type theory. And like in the last couple of days, people have presented many new versions, mostly cubicle type theories or model type theories. So what I mean with this is, for example, we have uh, what I think we call Bookhart, which is the type theory which is developed in the homotopy type theory book. Or we have like cubicle type theories, and, and not only one, but we have many different versions of it. Or we have uh, modern type theories, I think you should call it. <coughs> and there are also different versions. Mm. And then, uh, so Vladimir has uh, suggested this HTS system, of which there are also variations. Mm. We will come to this later. And then uh, you can do type theory in, in some um, vibration category or like Benoist path categories, or you can use uh, unretorialized tribes and you can do type theory in both. And <coughs> this gives you again some notion of type theory in which you can prove theorems. So let's say tribes and so on. And uh, now, well, the thing is, what, what bothers me somehow is that we don't really know how one of these things relate to each other. So ideally, we would want that, um, for example, OK, so for example, if, if we look into the hot book and we, we, we see some theorem which is, which is uh, proven there, but then it's maybe not incredibly surprising if, if uh, someone says that, well, OK, I have shown the same theorem in, in my version of cubicle type theory. But I mean, uh, so, so far, this is not really automatic. And it seems that many proofs are ported manually into new type theories. But ideally, we would want that many of these things describe the same thing, with the same type theories, but with uh, different computation rules, which make it easier to use one or the other, or something like this. And then, of course, some type theories are designed so that they actually enable new things, like these model type theories, so that it's really possible to express more than you were able to express before. But um, one would hope that there are certain conservativity properties. Um, yes. And so it seems that these conservativity questions, like, like if, if you, for example, uh, prove something in book, book, book code, then it should be possible to translate it nearly automatically to, to other type theories, and vice versa, hopefully. But these questions seem to be very difficult. At least whenever one asks a cubicle type theory expert whether they solve any sort of conservativity a question with respect to Bookhot, then the answer is that, well, I mean, the answers that I got was that usually they couldn't know. But eventually, I think we have to figure this out because otherwise, one day, each of us has their own favorite type theory and we cannot communicate with each other yet here. So at least canonicity in some form. Very weak form. 
Yes. So, so I think usually it's it's easier to see that something which we do in Bookcut can be can be uh, transported to other cubical type theories, right? But the other direction is much harder. Canonicity. So if you have canonicity for one theory, then you know that if you prove uh, sigma zero one state, it will be valid also in the book. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, thanks. Yeah. So eventually, I think we should try to find more connections because otherwise, well, one of us says that I have proven this theorem, and then it maybe actually only holds in this theory, and other people are using other theories where it maybe doesn't <coughs> actually hold automatically. Right. And yes, Steve. Maybe another thing to add to your list is infinity topos. The, the problem of relating infinity topos to the other type theories is just as um, yeah. ur urgent and it's of the same kind. Yeah, so do you mean like uh, Grotenbeek? And what what the points? Yeah, something like this. Sure. So yeah, we also would want something like this. And uh, so what I want to do in this talk, I want to discuss some, let's say, elementary internal problems. Elementary, not in the sense that they are easy, but in the sense that they are just types which, which could easily appear in the hotbook or even appear as, as uh, exercises or open problems in the hotbook, where I expect that they are inhabitable in some of these theories, but not in all. So let, let's see. For example, there's this open problem um, which concerns what we call the batch of of A many circles. So if we have some type A, then we can form a new type, a higher inductive type, which um, let's write its constructors like this. So let's call it WA. And is, as constructor, it has one point, which I call P. And then it has, um, let's call it L. So the idea is, for every element of A, we add P. We add uh, a loop around P. So uh, maybe we can draw it like this. So like A is some type. And now we, we take a point P here. And for anything in A, we draw such a loop. So um, uh, it will look like something like this. And um, now it's an open problem whether so the, the question which we now want to ask is if A is a set, can we show that uh, the, the batch of A many circles is a one type. Or uh, formulated differently, we could say is omega of W of A a set. So these two things are reformulations of each other. Uh, so basically, this here is uh, by definition just P equals P. Yeah, but I mean, I keep the space point here. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is one uh, problem which I think is interesting and which we should look at if we ask ourselves whether everything. Well, I mean, I think this is one of the problems which has potential to. Uh, separate some of these theories here. Uh, so another problem is well, uh, a very obvious <coughs> generalization of this if we take the suspension. And I want to mention this explicitly because it's explicitly recorded in the hot book as an open problem. So uh, the suspension of A looks very similar. Just in this case, we have 
two points, like n and s, and then for every, every element of a, we, we draw a path between the between n and s, like n for north and s for south coordinate. Now, because my a looked like a circle, this thing should hopefully look like a sphere. So, okay, let's call this problem here P1. So now P2, not very surprisingly, would say if A is a set, can we conclude that, um, that omega of sigma, like omega of the suspension of A, is a set as well. And uh, yeah, here again, it doesn't really matter which base point we choose, so let's just choose n. Okay, so this is uh, also an open problem in the hot book, so this is not explicitly mentioned, but you see that this is uh, just a special case of this. There, but like if you put, if you use this thing here and you replace a by a plus one, then you can use this additional one point to identify n and s, in which case it would become the suspension. So, um, sigma of a plus 1 is equivalent to a. Okay. Um, Now a third problem which I have asked on the hot mailing list a while ago and which also looks like it, it should be provable but which also seems to be very hard and I think it's, it's very similar is um, take a type B e with given points x and y and B e, and now we can consider the type B e where we add a new equality between x and y. So um, as I hit, this would look like, <coughs> let's say, uh, B path, because we had a path. So uh, we could say that this is generated by just uh, every point in B, it gives us a point <coughs> in B bar, and then um, we add one more equality which just is between the x and the y. So, um, sorry. If, if b is such a type, then maybe x is here and y is here, then what we do is we add a new path to this thing. And uh, now the question which I asked about was, um, uh, let's call it P3. Is it true that for, for every n, which is at least one, um, if B is, is n truncated, then also uh, B bar is n truncated? And the, the other direction should also hold. So, um, yeah, here we need to restrict ourselves to numbers which are at least one because uh, otherwise we could maybe start with a single point and a single point is contractible and then we add this path and we get something which is not contractible anymore. But the intuition that is that if we have a type which where we <coughs> already allow some loops somehow anyway, then it doesn't matter if we add one more loop and the thing will still be and truncated. Uh, now we can look at the common generalization of all of these things. So if we, if we look at what we did here, so the suspension here is just, the suspension is just a pullback like this. Now push out like this, thanks. And this thing here is just um, a push out like this. 
so the, the, the generalization of these problems would be we have a set A and we have types E, C, D such that uh, such that we also have a we have yeah we have a set A and types B, C, D and a, and a push out square like this then is it true that for every n, at least one um, b plus c is an n type exactly if uh, the, the push out d is an n type. Okay. Is it b plus c over n? Or are you saying b plus c? So I'm saying, well, I could either say that B is an n-type and C is an n-type, okay. but I can also say that B plus C is an n-type, so okay. that doesn't really change anything. And <coughs> A I have really restricted to be a set, because if we, if we allow A to be a one-type, for example, if A is S1, then we can put one and one here, and the push-up will be S2, and for S2, we already know that we cannot expect it to be an n-type anymore. Okay, so A really has to be a set, but the best is fixed at any level n. Okay. Um, yeah, so now I think these problems are interesting because in, in book part it seems that so far we didn't manage to prove any of them. And well, to be honest, my guess is actually that they are not provable in, in book hat in, in book hot. But this is just a bold guess. So it, it could of course be that I'm wrong. But it's interesting because when I ask this question, I mean the, the question about uh, adding a path here on the mailing list, then uh, Mike Schulman immediately said that well in any Grotendieck infinity topos yeah. it works. So uh, now if we if we hope to identify Bocot with internal languages of infinity to pi, then we would at least have to be able to prove these sorts of problems. The sort of completeness. Yeah, if you so. Yes? So when you say that, so does this imply that it's valid for simplicial sets? In the simplicial set model? Yeah, all of these, uh, all of these work in the simplicial set model. I mean, I'm. All I'm, of them are true. Yes. That suspension was a problem. If I haven't made a mistake at least. Suspension but, but I think that the problem is maybe that um, it's first it's it's harder to actually say what these high inductive types are in, in some models. Because well it's yeah, I, I think that um, maybe Simon can say something. I think it, it took a couple of iterations of the cubicle models in order to get a model where the sign inductive types actually exist. Right? Yep. Okay. But in the simplicial set model, the proof was something that requires a lot of work, or it's uh, hard to get? Oh, right. Um, well, Which, what do you use in the simplicial set model to prove this? Every yeah, right. So, so the thing is that um, okay, this is not true for P three and P four, but for the first two, with the swatch and the mm -hmm. suspension, we know that if A has decidable equality, then we can actually solve this problem in in book hot. And if P, C, and D are sites, then it <coughs> So if, if B, B and C, C and, and D, yeah. If sorry, if B and C are sets, then D is a set. No, you cannot really say this because so, so you have this example where you take uh, two and and one and one, and then the, the push out will be S one. So it's not a set. So this is not a set. <coughs> Yeah. 
Okay, so, so this is why I really ask for n to be at least one of these uh, statements here. Okay. Right. Um, Let's go through some of these uh, variations of homotopy type theory. And so, so my goal is to like make some guesses or say what some partial results are for different theories that I have mentioned here. And uh, so my goal is, I mean, the, the whole point of, of why I'm telling you this is to express that I think we should look at these problems if we want to find something which separates some of the theories from each other. Okay, so. <coughs> so first we have Pocot. Um, so in this, well, it seems to be very hard to prove all of them. We know some partial things. So, um, so let's say I make a table where on the left side I, I name some, some theories, on, on the right side I want to comment on are these problems G1 to P4 provable. Uh, and um, yeah, so in, in Bookhart. Uh, in general, uh, we don't know, but um, so I personally actually would guess that they are not provable, but this is only a guess. And uh, of course, I'm, I'm happy if you disagree and try to show that my guess is wrong. But we have some. Uh, we, we can show some partial results, for example, the thing which we said where A has decidable equality. Or um, if I have time later, I will, I will sketch some other approximations which, which are provable. So my intuition is that always if you really restrict the truncation levels in some reasonable way. So let, let's say you maybe don't want to show that, maybe here you don't want to show that B is an n type, but maybe you want to show that the n plus first homotopy group or something is trivial, then you should be able to do this in, in, um, in book hot. Well, okay, but even this is not so clear if, if n is a variable. Natural number. Uh, so, for example, one approximation which maybe I can talk about later is um, in 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 a next paper this year. Torsten and I have this result that uh, that at least this thing here is a set. So, in other words, uh, the first homogeny group of, of uh, omega WA is trivial. So, this I would view as a first very big approximation because, uh, this, I mean, if we can raise one here and maybe we can get rid of the truncation. We can we can get rid of the truncation, then we would be done with this uh, problem, which I've called P two here. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. What's my best strategy for 
dealing with the boards? Is this still high enough for you yeah, to see anything? So then, um, yeah, and, and so my guess here is actually that with respect to these pr uh, problems, the cubicle type theories are on the same level as Bookhot, which I think is what we want, because we want that. I think we want that the cubicle type theories can prove the same stuff as Bookhot can, but maybe in a more convenient way because maybe there's more computation going on. So, uh, yes. But, um, yeah, so there are so many versions of cubicle type theory that it's hard to actually even guess the same thing for all of them. So. When I talked to Favonia, my feeling was that maybe the ABC FHL version of Cartesian cubic type theory would not be at the same level. But okay, I cannot, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, this is only a guess anyway so far. So now, um, the next thing that what I want to discuss is. Uh, Will Watsky's HPS system. So I, I assume most of you are familiar with it. So this is a type theory where you, I, uh, so, so I would say you um, put <coughs> another layer of type theory on top of it, which formalizes part of the meta theory of, of homotopy type theory. So you have a type of strict equalities, which from the point of view of homotopy type theory should look like definitional equalities or behave exactly like definitional equalities. But uh, you have a type or a pre-type of those so that you can actually prove such strict or, or definitional equalities inside of this system. But it's, it's not, a, I mean, from the from the point of view of homotopy type theory, this would not be a full type. So it would still live outside of the core system of homotopy type theory. It would just be something on top. And um, so here in particular, he has this axiom that, yeah, so if you do this, then you can talk about something like the external natural numbers, but because you have a type theory layer around homotopy type theory, you now have some sort of pre-type of natural numbers. So the idea is that in, in many, or the way I understand it, is that in many models, like uh, simplicial sets or cubic sets, the underlying thing that you have is some pre-sheaf model. So you have actually many pre-sheaves lying around but you're not treating all of them as types because only those which satisfy some current filling property are types. But the other ones still exist, but they are not really part of, of what you want. But I mean, they are still there, so maybe they could be useful in some, some way. Or if you look at some uh, vibration category and you do type theory in there, then maybe not all objects are vibrant, but in the end, you're really only interested in the vibrant objects. Okay, so let's say this one has a, um, pre type of strict natural numbers. Let's call it NS. And um, so now I, I have some reason to conjecture, and hopefully, I will. I get to justify that uh, later. So I have some reason to conjecture that in this system we actually can answer these questions. So my conjecture is that here indeed these questions are provable. I mean these problems can be solved. Um, so now I want to talk about a third thing here. And now I think I really have to uh, do 
do it like this. So, um, so Schulman in 2013 has uh, suggested to look at certain models of, of homotopy type theory where you can have something like infinitary sigma types. So, Yes, you have sigma types which have infinitely many components, and in in like in a proof assistant, it's hard to write this down, right? Because it's infinite. But if you work in some vibration category or a tribe or something, then this is a very <coughs> natural assumption. Because what you would say is, you would say that if you have a sequence of vibrations like this. Then the limit, then this the sequence should have a limit, and this limit should also be vibrant. And this is a very natural assumption which which works in I think most models which we actually I mean in, in most models that we know it either works or we don't know whether it works. Or maybe this weak statement is actually true for all models that we know. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we would probably want to say something a bit uh, stronger, like we would want to say that if we have such a sequence of vibrations over another such sequence of vibrations, then what we get in the limit will still be a vibration, so like something like this. But uh, yeah, essentially it's something like this. Okay, and. Um, yeah, so, so some years ago, uh, Paolo and, and Karsten and I have tried to find a somewhat more uh, flexible version of, of HTS. And so because we, we, we realized, which probably was a very easy realization, that actually you can have many moving parts in such an HTS system to allow yourself to, like, to, to to encode more or fewer axioms. And we, we tried to find a more descriptive name than homotopy type system, and we ended up uh, calling it two-level type theory, which has nothing to do with Millis two-level type theory. So there's another unfortunate name clash. And it's maybe also not as descriptive as we would want it to be. But it is. Well, we call it two-level because we have two levels of equalities. So we have the normal equality of homotopy type theory, and we have a pre-type of strict equalities, just like in in Mavotsky's, uh homotopy type system. So and and uh, now um, Paolo in his thesis has shown that if you consider this two-level type theory with no additional axioms then you actually get a very nice thing, because then you get that it really corresponds to Hochhardt. So there's a conservativity result by uh, Paolo, which says that if we do two-level type theory without anything, we get Hochhardt. And um, so then we also can, can compare it with Wawatsky's version of the same thing. And I think it's essentially Martin Hoffman's result, Martin Hoffman's conservativity result of extensional over intentional type theory, that uh, Wawatsky's formulation of this thing corresponds to two-level type theory plus the axiom that uh, the internal natural numbers type is the same as the strict natural numbers type. Um, so now in this in this two-level type theory, we also can encode Mike's uh, axiom very easily because there we can really just also talk about any limit because uh, if we take uh, in, in the in the strict fragment of this two-level type theory, what we essentially have is multi left type theory with axiom UIP, and in, in this 
system. One can just construct limits in the same way as, as one construct limits in the category of sets. So we can just write down what, what such a limit is. And then you can, we can just easily add the axiom that such a tower of vibrations has a vibrant limit. And um, so maybe this is a bit vague, but I think it, it is possible to, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to really uh, compare these two systems precisely because they are formulated in very different ways. But I think it's, it's reasonable to say that this uh, type theory of, of Mike corresponds essentially to a two-level type theory plus this axiom that, uh, that towers of vibrations have finite limits. Okay. Yeah, so now I haven't said yet what I expect for, for this type theory to be the answer for these open problems. <coughs> so my conjecture is that in this type theory we can also show P1 to be 4. But I think there is a uh, uh, subtlety because I'm not sure whether we can really show everything that we can show here. Because if you look at this problem here, for example, again, <coughs> so what I would expect is that in, in Schulman's version of homotopy type theory, what we can show is we can show we can show this equivalence if we fix some external number n. But I, I don't think we can, I mean, I don't expect that we can show it for a variable n in the type of natural numbers. So what we can, what, what I conjecture for this system is still weaker than what I conjecture for HTS. Try to sketch this proof here. Or no, maybe first I should say, well, maybe first I should try to give some intuition why these problems are difficult to do in, in book hot. Although I think well, the, the best way to understand why they are hard is to understand to solve them. Because, I mean, otherwise it's, well, otherwise it's hard to get any intuition for this. So let's see. I concentrate on the problem with this wedge of A many circles. <coughs> so let's say why is the problem whether omega WA is set hard? So the intuition is that. The intuition is that elements of, of this loop space here are like lists over A. Right. So, yeah, so, so in, order to, in order to prove that this thing is a set, we probably first would want to describe this type a bit better. So intuitively, an element, uh, we have it here. And, and, and so now we're looking at paths from, from P to P. So intuitively, how such an element looks like is, well, we, we take something in A, for example this one, and we go around once. And then maybe we can take another element and, and, go, and go around along the path which is given by this element. And then we take a third one, and maybe this time we go around the other way. So, um, <coughs> an element could look like a list. Like let's say um, x 
y z. And then for every element, we also need to say whether we go in the positive or the negative direction. So let's say x may be positive, y may be positive, z may be negative, and so on. So this is a list of a times full. And um, so how does it correspond to some element of this loop space? So it's very easy to, to map this to an element of this loop space. I've called this constructor L, which, which constructs these loops. So we would map this to L of x, concatenated with L of y, concatenated with L of z. But this time we invert this, and so on. And this thing will be something in omega so we have constructed such a map. And now this looks good because now we know that this thing here is a set. Mm -hmm. right? But the problem is that uh, this map here is not an equivalence. Because you see we, we could have, for example, the list x plus x minus would be mapped to, to Lx concatenated with the inverse of Lx. So this would be the same, I mean, this would be the trivial element of, of omega wa. And the empty list would also be mapped to this trivial element. Yeah, so unfortunately, this is not an equivalence. Right. So what can we do? Um, so if we take a step back, and what we have done looks very, I mean, it, it is really an instance of uh, the Van Kampen theorem, more or less, by Carbonia and, and Mike in, in homotopy type theory. So let's recall what this says. So if we, if we apply this, it would tell us that yeah, it would tell us that the fundamental proof of, of uh, omega W A is equivalent to these lists, but quotiented by the obvious relation. Yeah, the obvious relation, I mean that, um, that uh, x plus x minus and so on gets identified with the list where x plus x minus are omitted. Right, now unfortunately this doesn't help us very much because you see here we take a set quotient, so this thing here is by definition a set, it's, it's truncated to be a set, and this here is also a set truncated, so it's also by definition a set. So it doesn't look like we have gained very much because our goal was to show that this is a set and now we, well, what we know is actually really orthogonal <coughs> to the problem because we, we only know how it looks like if we make it into a set. I think you have an extra loop space. Uh, do I have an extra loop space? Yeah, because you get the part of one here. I, I need to remove this part. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, if I can use a truncation, maybe that's what. So yeah, I could do. Yeah. Do this. Okay. So it looks like what we really would want to do would be to to show some version of the Van Kampen theorem where we don't only talk about homotopy groups, but about loop spaces. <coughs> and, um, and what we have done here, I think, is essentially exactly that. Right. So why is it difficult to, why is it difficult to write down the correct quotient of, of list A times 2? 
So maybe don't have to saturate that we found the thing which we expect it to be. So well, I mean this is difficult because if we have something like like this list. So now we want to identify it with the list where we remove x, x plus and x minus. So we only get uh, y minus y plus. And then we identify it with a list where both of these are removed. I'm not sure whether this is still readable, but I didn't write anything. Um, yeah, so so now um, well, if we do it in the other in the other direction, mm -hmm. we could also remove the vice first. So we only get the list with the x's left. And from there we could reduce to the list without any x's and y's left. And now unfortunately we need to add the I mean, like, like we could consider the type which, which consists of these lists where we add these equalities in here. But now, unfortunately, we would have to add this coherence condition which says that if we go this way, we get the same as if we go this way. And uh, now we would have to do this thing one level up and so on. And it would look like one of these infinite problems where you need to write down infinitely many such coherence conditions. And the reason why I assume, why I would expect that in these systems here you can do this is that these systems here are designed such that you can write down such uh, towers of, of conditions. I mean, this was like the, I think this was like Vladimir's and it, it was certainly Vladimir's main purpose of, of HTS that you can write down a definition for semi-simplicial types. Uh, or a test. Or a test. Okay. Right. Um, okay, so one thing maybe which is worth mentioning is that Paolo has uh, found out that you can actually write down this type more explicitly. So you can say that um, you can define the higher inductive type, which I want to call FA. And uh, this is uh, just a more general version of what Thorsten has mentioned in this talk. So you can write down this type, which at first, it looks like you're just constructing lists. So we have an empty list, let's just call it new. And then we have a cons operator, which, is, which allows us to <coughs> add an element of A at the beginning of a list. And now what we want to say is that for any element in A, For any element in A, uh, cons of A is an equivalence. So this does not look like a normal higher inductive type, but we can unfold this E a bit. So we can, um, I mean, we have actually many choices how we would want it to look like. We could unfold this, for example, to become. Uh, <coughs> One inverse uh, oh sorry. Yeah, so if we just write down two potential inverses for this cons function here, so they have the same type. So let's say I I R and I L for left inverse and right inverse. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> then we write down, um, uh, maybe just say that IR is really a right inverse of, of cons 
actually I never know which one is right and which one is left. So I just guess. <coughs> so we want to say that for any A um, and for any element of FA, mm -hmm. cons of A of I R of A of X is equal to X. And now we do the same thing to say that IL is a left inverse of cons. Mm -hmm. uh, we could also use one of the other definitions of, of uh, equivalence. So this would just mirror the definition of the bi-invertible map yeah. version of equivalence. So I think Torsten has shown the half adjoint uh, version of equivalence. And, um, yeah, these will all work. I think there are a couple of others which also would work. And it, it, it doesn't really matter because in the end, all we care about is that we get this high elective type FA, which looks like lists, but we say that the cons operator induces equivalences. Okay. train of thought, what is the property now of F that you can prove from that description of the hit? Yes. If you make such a hit, what happens? Right. So, I mean, good question. The thing which I could say now is that we can actually prove now that this is the correct thing. Okay. So, we can prove that uh, omega WA yeah. is equivalent to FA. The free group, or? Yeah, the free group, so it's called F or free group, I guess. Yeah. So this looks promising, but unfortunately, we still cannot show that, or at least I didn't manage to show that this higher elective type FA is a set. So accept your challenge, challenge please, and, and try to show it. So it, it looks like it should be because like, uh, this here is just this, and then we add some propositional thing so we would hope that, so, so of course these lists here are still sets and then we add some propositional things, so we would hope that it still is a set, but unfortunately I, I don't know how to prove it. Maybe it's not provable, maybe it is, I don't know. But, um, what is the universal property that it has if it's not, it can't be a free group and not be a set. What, what oh, sorry, there's a name clash. So the free group as defined in the hot book is by definition set truncated. Yeah. So maybe I should have been clear about this. So well, I, I should probably call this the free higher group. So I do not explicitly set truncate it. But of course now my question would be, if this, well, this thing works with any, any type A. So the question would be, does this the higher group as constructed here generalize the free set truncated book from the hot book. And uh, it turns out that if we could prove that for a set A, this high inductive type here is a set, then indeed this uh, formulation here would generalize the free group from the hot book because the other properties are fairly easy once you get this thing done. But but it's open whether this is a set. Okay. Um, okay, I will just spend two minutes and then finish because I see that my chair already looked at the time. Yeah, I'll then wrap up. What is it? It's kind of homogeneous objects in Could you just push the other one a little wire so that we can see what we group the, 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 the last one? So uh, the results are in some paper which I recently posted in the archive. I mean the, the details of the following thing which I now just sketch in one minute. So if A is a set, then um, this 
this thing is a set. So what we do is, uh, first you need to show that this uh, free higher group is really the right thing. So omega, omega wa is really equivalent to fa. But this is standard. It's basically, I mean, it's, it's basically the same as <coughs> calculating the fundamental group of a circle just with, well, I mean, yeah, an index version of it, I guess. So then next, what you would do is you would define a higher inductive type Na, which uh, is kind of a non-recursive version of this free group here, which approximates, which approximates what, uh, I guess I've already deleted it. Yeah, which approximates this thing that you start with lists and you want to identify two lists if they like if, if one arises from the other by deleting a red X, mm -hmm. and then you want to uh, exchange such such uh, such steps of removing a red X, and then maybe at some point you need to truncate because you cannot write down all the infinite infinitely many coherence conditions. So this one gets defined. No, but in the next step, you would want to show that NA is a set. And I think this is actually the core part of this whole thing, where I use some machinery about uh, constant functions and then constant functions factor through the propositional truncations and, and something like this. And uh, finally, what you would want to show is that if you take the one truncation of a, FA, then you really do get NA. And now if you combine these things, then uh, yeah, you get that, I mean, you get the theorem. Okay. So the details can be found on the archive. Thank you. Question or two? It was a very clear talk indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, this is a very interesting question. So, you also mentioned that the kinds of uh, parts, these uh, modal type theories, and you didn't really bring them in. Uh, but one possible way to bring them in would be to look at the uh, topological versions of higher homotopy group Van Kampen theorems. Okay. Are you familiar with those? Um, wait, so sorry, which, which type theories were you, did um, you mention? Modal, you? modal type theories, um, so modal modal. type theories. There, is a, there are a bunch of higher homotopy and Kampen theorems that can be formulated in okay. a type theory. I might tell you something about the higher homotopy groups of these things. So okay, okay, thanks. I, I have to admit that I'm, I mean, I don't know much about well, modal type I'll, theories. I'll, I'll apart I'm from surprised you mentioned these modal type theories, but then you didn't have them in your yeah. paper. Okay, yeah, this is well, just because I have to learn more. I mean, that's why I didn't mention them, but yeah, I had a feeling that they are kind of important in this picture. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks for your time. Because you learned a lot about them this week. There was a Felix. Uh, so, here's an idea of a group that the modal type theory that produces the differential cohesive picture yeah. to maybe disprove P1. And Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Infinity deposits because if I get this right, if uh, omega WA is a set that should, for example, give you a free Lie group construction, yeah, okay. which gives you a for some manifold a free Lie group on this manifold. And I think that doesn't exist. I managed to ask Bruce before the talk, before he went away, and he mm -hmm. said he doubted that it exists, at least as a Lie group, but it could exist or not exist as a set value chief on the sites I had on the board. So mm -hmm. maybe that's a way to disprove or collect some evidence that mm -hmm. it actually 
Ah, that's very, yeah, that's very interesting because so far I had no idea how you could show that some of these answers are no in my original table. Mm. So, so you, you say this pool P1 or this P1? Yes. It's not a set then. Ah, yeah. if you know, it doesn't exist. The Jakob, then Peter, then Schluss. So what's the intuition why it should, why it should work in HDS? <laughs> so the intuition is that in this case, you, you can write down much better approximations. Okay, I mean, I didn't get to actually show you how, this, how these approximations look like. But basically, I want to write down something like this FA here, but in a non-recursive way. So, uh, Non-recursive in the sense that uh, FA shouldn't. Um, well, you use natural numbers instead. Or... Yeah, I, I, um, so instead of doing it like this, where these where FA already appears in arguments of the constructors. I write it, write it down in some non-recursive way where I start on level zero with just taking lists, and then on level one, I identify two lists if they contain if, if one arises as the other by removing a radix, and then on level two, I, I exchange two such removing steps and some other coherences, and, and so on. And uh, then I can define better and better such approximations. And because of this HDS axiom, I can define all of these things as vibrant types and, and have a vibrant coordinate of these. Okay, Peter, you got a quick one? Quick, oh, yes, that would be quick. So, just to remark on where you compare the group with the infinity topologies yeah. and suggested that maybe since it holds there, maybe we need to fix both of that. Somehow, in my mind, we have one topologies. Group neat topuses are not I mean, complete for a higher order logic. It's elementary topuses that are. And so, particularly the, the analysis in class should be with this whole and all the elementary infinity topuses, not group neat infinity topuses. Do you know? Okay, good uh, question. I, I don't know the answer. Maybe someone else knows anything? Just a comment that um, in, uh, my, my notion of two level foundation. The link between the levels are not just an interpretation, mm -hmm. but there is a, a model which has a free property for so that the second level is the internal language of this uh, completion. Okay. So are there conditions <coughs> that link uh, the two levels there? Like uh, completion with respect to certain structures? Um, so not just okay. a translation, but uh, the fact that the structure, you, you, the, the language is internal language of a completion. No, I, I really think it's something else than in, in your... It's just a translation, it's just a translation. When yes. you get the two levels, it's just a translation between two, two theories. Okay, in, you mean in your, in your system? No, in my system it's stronger. It's ah, not okay. just that I have two theories and translate one into the other. Okay. You have a model with a free property. Yes. For which the, the, the second level is a, 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 a fragment of the... Uh, ah, yes. Or the yes. internal language of the model. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So we have a free property which. Uh, uh, so there's no, there's no translation here. I mean. There is a translation, but beside that, uh, there, are, there is more. But here, here there's no translation. I mean, okay. so, so it's like the, the vibrant and the non vibrant uh, uh, objects in the, in the cubicle model. You have the, 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 the pre sheaf and then you have the, the Khan things, and the Khan things are living at the second level. The pre-sheaves are on one level, and the Khan vibrations live in the other level. Mm -hmm. 